Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today I'm going to go over EKG rhythms, specifically atrial fibrillation and a flutter. Many people have a hard time differentiating between those two rhythms along with normal sinus rhythm. So today I'm going to go over the differences between the rhythms, show you on the board what each rhythm looks like, what you need to look for in the P waves, the R waves and give you five easy steps on how to analyze these rhythms. Here in a second, I'm gonna go over those five steps, and these five steps are steps that you need to use whenever you analyze any type of rhythm. So it can help you differentiate between other type of rhythms such as V-fib, V-tac, sinus tac, and every other type of rhythm that's out there. But first, before you watch this video, if you are relatively new to analyzing EKGs or you need a refresher, please check out my other videos on how to analyze the PQRS and how to count the ventricular and atrial rates because it'll help give you a foundation um, before you watch this video so you won't be that confused. And also, another important thing, after you watch this video, be sure to go to our website, registerednursrn.com, and take the quiz on testing your ability to analyze these atrial dysrhythmias. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go over those five steps. Okay, the first step, whenever you're looking at a rhythm, you'll want to look to see if there's any P waves present. Remember, this is the atrial contraction of the heart. And if there are P waves, how many P waves are there in a six second strip? Now I was talking to you about that other video on how to count your atrial rate in six seconds. And what you do is you count the little boxes that are on your EKG strip and you count until you hit 30. And however many appeared in the 30, in between those 30 boxes, you take that and multiply that by 10 and then you have your atrial rate. Next. Are the P waves regular? This is where you want to use your calipers. And if you don't have calipers, you can use a piece of paper and you'll measure out to see if each atrial contraction, which is your P waves, is regular. Next, number three, are your R waves regular? This is part of the QRS complex where you have the spike and you want to measure out with either your calipers or a piece of paper if the R waves are regular. Four, how many R waves are in six seconds? You're gonna do this the same way that you calculated your P waves. And next, number five, if you do have P waves, what is the length of your PR interval? This is very important whenever you are looking for a heart block. And the width of your QRS complex. This is where you would count the little squares in between the spike and it tells you how wide or narrow your QRS complex is. This is very important because in tachycardias, your complex tends to be narrow, but in VTAC, your complex used to, it tends to be wide. So that helps you analyze those rhythms. So now let's go over what a normal rhythm looks like and compare it with atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Right here, you have normal sinus rhythm. Now we're going to apply those five rules or five steps to analyzing this rhythm. And this is what you normally get with normal sinus rhythms. Okay, first, we're gonna look to see if there's P waves present. And remember, either from the video that you watch on the PQRS wave where I explained it, or you just know, your P waves present before your QRS complexes. And right here in green, you can see our P waves. So yes, we do have P waves. Now, next step, is to count how many P waves are present if within six seconds. And remember, you wanna count these itty bitty squares, 30 of them, and in between however many 30 are is what your atrial rate is. And here our atrial rate is 70 beats per minute. We got seven of these P waves, and we times that by 10, and we got 70. So our atrial rate is 70 beats per minute. And remember, a normal rate is 60 to 100. Okay, next, we're gonna see, are our P waves regular? Are they happening at exactly the same time? Here, you can use calipers, but right here, I'm gonna use a piece of paper. And how you do that is you get your piece of paper, and you mark where the P wave began, which is right here 
and then you mark where the other P wave started. Okay, so we have an estimate where it is. Now we're gonna compare the other ones together. And we just move our piece of paper and see they're presenting exactly where I marked it. So it looks like our P waves are definitely regular. Okay, next we're going to ask ourselves, are our R waves regular? This is, remember you have Q, R, S, T. So we're looking at our R waves. These are the tops, which are the spikes. And we're gonna see if these are regular using the same method that we did with the P waves. I'm gonna mark on our piece of paper and compare them. And they are definitely regular. So yes. And next, we're gonna count how many of these R waves are in normal sign, are in this rhythm. And we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our ventricular rate is 70 beats per minute. And we just wanna make sure that we don't have a heart block going on or anything. So we would count from the beginning, because we wanna look at our PR interval, the beginning of the P wave, to the beginning of the QRS. And our interval is less than 0.12 seconds, which is normal. I mean, it's 0.12, and you want your interval between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. So that's a normal PR. Again, a normal PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. And then our QRS complex, it's very narrow, and it's definitely less than 0.12 seconds. Okay, let's go over our next rhythm, atrial fib. Okay, now since we cover normal sinus rhythm, which is a normal rhythm most of us are in, let's cover atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. But first, let's talk about what's going on in the heart whenever you're having these two rhythms. What's happening whenever these atrial dysrhythmias are happening is that the foci in the heart are sending various multiple signals to the atrium, which is causing them to quiver. And when they quiver, blood is just pulling in there and it's not shooting through the valves to get through the heart. So whenever blood is pulling, that is not good. That means that a thrombi or a thrombus could be forming. And that really puts your patient at risk for strokes and um, a pulmonary embolism, anything like that. So whenever this is happening, especially at a fast rate, we have to get it under control. So let's go over atrial fibrillation. Now using the five steps that we went over, we're going to look at this rhythm. And whenever you look at this rhythm, all you can see majorly are your QRSs and your T waves. And in between that, you see these little squiggly lines. Some people may interpret those as P waves. Those are not P waves. They're called fibrillatory waves, which are called F waves. So those are that. Now, you can't count your P. If you don't have P waves, you can't count your P waves. So the next step would be how many P waves are there? There's none, so you'd put unable to determine. Now number two, our second step is, are the P waves regular? Again, we don't have any P waves to count, so that would be unable to determine. Step three, R waves. Now we do have R waves, but have you, do you notice anything different? These R waves are different looking than our other ones, a normal sinus rhythm. So we want to see if they're regular. Again, you want to use your calipers or a piece of paper like I am here. We're going to measure out our R waves. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark on our paper where the first two are and compare them with the others. And look, they are not matching up at all. So it's very safe to say that our R waves are irregular. So in AFib, we have no P waves, we can't count the atrial rate, and our R waves are irregular. So let's keep going. Step four, what is the rate of the R waves? We can count those because they are present. And we'll count them in the six seconds. And remember the six seconds, you count 30 squares, small squares, and you multiply that by 10. And here we have 80. But because it varies, 
I don't know if you've ever been in a clinical setting and you've seen a patient in atrial fib, but you'll notice that their heart rate is constantly fluctuating. One minute it'll be 80, next minute it'll be 86, the next minute it might be 90, then go back down to 80s. It's always fluctuating. So here the rate's in the 80s. And then next, you would count your PR interval, but we can't count our PR interval because we don't have any P waves, but we can count our QRS complex. And it's definitely less than 0.12, it's very narrow. So that is the hallmark with the AFib. So let's go over those again. With AFib, you're not gonna have any P waves. What you're seeing are F waves, okay? No P waves. And you won't count, be able to count that atrial rate. And your R waves, will be irregular because you have various times that those atrium are quivering and then you have the PQ, the QRS wave contracting and you're seeing those R waves, so they will be irregular. Now let's move on to A flutter because there is a big difference between A fib and A flutter and you'll be able to see on this diagram. Okay, for A flutter right here, you probably already noticed something different. In between your T waves and your PQRSs, you have what's called sawtooth appearance of an F wave. These are actually very beautiful to see on a real patient who's in A flutter. Um, most of the time your patients will be in AFib, but there are occasions where you'll see patients in atrial flutter and it's very noticeable. And the reason it is, is because you have these sawtooth appearances of the F waves. Now in AFib, you do not have the sawtooth appearance of these. So that is a huge thing that you will have. So let's go through our five steps. Step number five, are there any P waves? No, there's no P waves, only F waves. So we can't count the atrial rate. Step two, we want to look at our R waves, and we do have R waves, and are they regular? And we're gonna measure them out. And typically in a flutter, your R waves will be regular. There are some times where they're not regular, but here they are definitely regular. So they measure right. Next, you'll want to count your ventricular rate. And to do that, you'll count your R waves. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a little bit longer than a six second strip, but the rate is 70s. And with a flutter, it will typically stay the same because you don't have the fluctuation like you do in a fib because your R waves are regular here in a flutter. So it's the 70, 71, 72. And next, you would pr try to count your PR interval, but you can't here because you don't have any P waves. And your QRS complex is narrow. It's zero point. It's less than 0 0.12. So that's normal. So again, uh, your atrial flutter will have the sawtooth appearance, but it will not have any P waves. And your R waves will typically be regular. So let's go over real fast again, the difference between atrial fib and A flutter. A fib, you will have no P waves, and your R waves will typically be irregular. Okay, in A flutter, you will have the sawtooth appearance of your F waves, and there will be no P waves, and your R waves will be regular. So now, let's test your knowledge and take a quick quiz. Okay, quiz question one. Let's analyze and see what this rhythm is. Okay, using the easy five steps, let's start. Okay, is there any P waves? There are no P waves. I just see some T waves and QRS, so no P waves. Uh, question two, are the P waves regular? We don't have P waves, so we don't know. Um, step five, R waves, we do have R waves, and are they regular? So using either the piece of paper or um, your calipers, let's measure out our R wave and see if they're regular. And let's see, they are definitely not regular. So no, our R waves are not regular. So we know we have no P waves and our R waves are unregular. Next, how many R waves are in six seconds? Let's count them. We look like we have a rate of probably 140 to 150, so pretty fast. That is our rate for our R waves. And what is the length of our PR interval? That's the last step. We don't have any 
P wave, so we can't count that. And the width of our QRS complex is less, they're pretty narrow, so it's less than 1.2. So the hallmark, according to what we just learned, this is atrial fibrillation. It wouldn't be a flutter because we don't have the sawtooth appearance like we did in the other one, and it's definitely not normal sinus rhythm because we do not have P waves in this rhythm and the R waves are irregular. So let's go to the next rhythm. Okay, our second question, we have this rhythm here. Now using our five steps, we're gonna see, are there any P waves? No P waves. Are there, um, we can't count the atrial rate because there's no P waves, so we'll move to step three, which are, are the R waves regular? And we'll measure them out to see if they are. and they are most definitely regular, so we know that we have no P waves and our R waves are regular. How many R waves do we have in six seconds? We'll count them out. Two, three, four, seven. We have seven in six seconds, and remember the strip was a little longer than six seconds. And we can't count the length of our PR interval and the width of our complex is less than one, is about 0.12 seconds. So we know that we have this sawtooth appearance for our F waves. We know that there's no P waves and our R waves are regular. So we know that this is atrial flutter. Now let's move to our next one. Okay, our next rhythm is this. Let's start with our five steps. Are there any P waves? Yes, finally we have P waves. Okay, what? let's count and see how many P waves we have in six seconds. One, two, three. Seven. We have seven, so seven times 10 is 70, so we have an atrial rate of 70. Um, next, let's see if our P waves are regular. You're gonna use your calipers or a piece of paper. And our P waves are definitely regular. Next, we're gonna see how our R waves look. Are they regular as well? I'm gonna mark those out. Our R waves are regular, so yes. So we have P waves, we have an atrial rate of 70, we have R waves, and let's count our ventricular rate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times 10 is 70, so we have a ventricular rate of 70. And the length of our PR interval looks like it's about 0 0.12 seconds. We're measuring from the P wave to the beginning of the QRS to see how long it is. You wanna do that to make sure you don't have a heart block. And the width of our QRS complex is normal at 0 0.12 as well. So here, this meets all the signs of normal sinus rhythm. So that is our answer to that. Now to our very last one. Okay, we have this last rhythm as our very last question. Now let's analyze it use the, the five step rules. First, we're gonna look for P waves. Do we have any P waves? All I see are QRSs, some T waves, and just these little squiggly lines known as F waves. So no P waves. So since we don't have P waves, we can't count the atrial rate, and we can't see if they're regular. So next, we're gonna move on to our R waves. And we definitely have R waves. And let's see if they are regular. and it definitely looks like that our R waves are not regular. So we have no P waves and our R waves are unregular. But let's count our ventricular rate using the six second rule. It's about the 80s, so we have a ventricular rate of 80s. And we're going to see if we can't count our PR interval because we don't have a P wave and our QRS complex is normal. So it's about 0.12 seconds. So we know from what we've learned that this must be atrial fibrillation because we don't have any sawtooth appearances. Um, we have no P waves and our R waves are not regular. So that is the answer to that one. So that's the difference between atrial fib and atrial flutter, and I hope you found this useful. And be sure to go to our website, registerednursrn.com, to take that quiz on how well you can differentiate between those rhythms yourself. And be sure to check out our other teaching tutorials and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.